When it comes to writing manga, people honestly give Hidehiko Araki too much of a hard time, endlessly repeating phrases like Araki forgot when something isn't directly explained to them while it's happening, because in most cases, these moments of forgetting are actually just ignorance on the part of the reader. Though Araki is not a perfect writer, and one of the best examples of his failing as a writer is in his endlessly inconsistent writing of Okiyasu Nijimura's stand, The Hand. Alright, when I say that the hand is inconsistent, I don't mean that Okiyasu doesn't use it efficiently enough. Araki specifically gave the hand to him because he wanted a character with an insanely strong ability that was hindered by the user's own slow-mindedness. So when I say inconsistent, what I mean is that the hand's ability doesn't work consistently when it's used. Now you might think that that was a pointless clarification, but you'd be surprised with the amount of people who think that I'm saying that Okiyasu didn't use the hand effectively enough. Now I should state that I have actually no problem with Okiyasu as a character, he's one of my favorites from part 4. I'm more just looking at how Araki wrote his stand. Though, before we get too into that, let's get a brief description of what the hand is supposed to be able to do. The hand's ability is that anything that the right palm of the stand touches while it's in a swiping motion will be erased from the universe and sent somewhere else. This includes physical matter or empty space. Very similar to Vanilla Ice's stand, Cream, though what makes the two different is that when the hand erases something, the universe will correct for this erasure and forcibly stitch the empty space back together the instant that the object vanishes. This changes the physical property of whatever was erased, as seen when he swipes the sign outside of his house, changing it permanently. Along with this, Okiyasu can erase the space between two objects to pull them closer together. He refers to this ability as teleportation, and only one of these two properties of his ability stays somewhat consistent throughout the part. Because you see, Araki uses Okiyasu's teleportation power quite frequently, and because this power functions on the fundamental understanding that when he teleports, it's the reality stitching him closer to where he wants to go, it appears like Araki forgot the other stipulation of that stand ability. Now, of course, I'm not against characters learning new ways to use their abilities, or ignoring previously established powers as long as it doesn't affect the narrative. But in the case of Okiyasu, it's quite different. Because, you see, changing his ability like this directly changes the outcome of one of the major fights that he has. Because, in the fight with Red Hot Chili Peppers, he corners him by teleporting up to him and beating him within an inch of his life. Then he proceeds to trap him far away from any power source, making sure that he can't escape. Originally intending to interrogate him, but after being coaxed on, he swipes down, slicing off the bottom half of Red Hot Chili Peppers and, assumedly, killing him and avenging his brother. But instead, he cuts a hole in the ground that dug right into an underground circuit, allowing Red Hot Chili Peppers to power up. Now, if Okiyasu's universe stitching ability was still in no effect, then the ground should have completely closed off after the swipe ended, leaving Red Hot Chili Peppers dead, thus ending the arc early. Though, for plot reasons, the ability never did this, and Red Hot Chili Peppers not only gets away, but nearly kills Okiyasu in the process. Luckily, he survives thanks to Josuke, but if he had died here, this death would have felt like one of the most forced deaths in JoJo, because it completely ignored what the character had before, just so they could get a dramatic sad death scene. Along with this, the hand's teleportation ability is very vague on what it can and can't do sometimes. Of course, I'm okay with Okiyasu being able to distinguish between what swipes pull him somewhere and what swipes pull someone else closer to him, but what I'm not okay with is how these swipes technically work. Because you see, in the fight with Josuke, he's able to pull Josuke's whole person and everything behind him towards Okiyasu. The same is true when he uses it on Koichi's body. So in these two uses, we have established idea that when Okiyasu uses the hand, he pulls a lot with him even if he doesn't mean to. Because when Okiyasu uses the hand, he is erasing space itself, which means that logically the background should always be affected by the use of the ability. But when he uses the ability later to steal a check from Shigechi and pull Stray Cat out of Killer Queen, he steals specific segments of what's in front of him instead of the whole picture, with no indication that the swipe he used was less powerful. In fact, it's the same shape and size. Now, one could argue that the accuracy of the hand increased over time as Okiyasu got more accurate with his ability, and this would be a fine explanation for any other character in the series, but it doesn't really fit Okiyasu, since not only is he a self-proclaimed idiot, his stand stats don't favor accuracy in any way. And I mean, we all know that the hand's accuracy isn't great because it unintentionally yanked pots off a fence 
fence that was quite a distance away from Josuke the instant he used his teleportation ability. And the people who might use the David production scene as an excuse for why the pots came flying so quickly, well, in the manga, they hit Okiyasu after his first use of teleportation. And finally, but most importantly, he is a character specifically designed to use his stand poorly. So the excuse that he just got more accurate just doesn't stick. But even if we are to accept that Okiyasu's accuracy has increased, every time he's used his stand, it's been slightly different than the previous uses. You see this when Okiyasu shifts the direction of Kira by swiping near him. Internal logic dictates that instead of changing the direction of Kira and Killer Queen, they would have just been pulled towards Okiyasu, instead of being slightly rotated. But the plot needed Kira to face Okiyasu, so the hand made it happen. Or when he saves Josuke from a fatal contact air bubble, he swipes it away and it moves towards his direction. This seems like it's working normally, but just like the pots during his first use of the teleportation ability, Josuke should have moved slightly when the hand swiped, even if the movement was only slight. But that might have caused Josuke to be pulled in the bomb in some way and made Okiyasu's reveal a bit pointless. So yet again, the hand swipe is dictated by the plot. In fact, if I think about it too much, the hand is one of the few stands that is a it just works stand, something that is dictated by whatever the plot needs it to do. And Araki doesn't seem to really care about staying consistent with its power, probably due to its overpowered nature. But again, what do you expect when you give a main villain tier stand to a 10th grader? Which raises a better point, how the fuck did Okiyasu make it to the 10th grade? I guess some questions are better left unanswered. And if you enjoyed this video and want to see more videos like in the future, I have a Patreon at patreon.com slash guy. And if you want to swipe away all those bad feelings inside, well first you can do so by buying a copy of Shimonetta at buyshimonetta.com.